Uh, hello, welcome to my presentation. I'm Sergio Salambri. I'm, I am a web developer at Daffy, and I'm going to talk how we use Daffy, uh, how we use Remix at Daffy. So, first, what is Daffy? Daffy is a platform to help people donate to the charities they care about in an automated way. And to do that, we provide both an, I, an iOS application and a web application, and we use Remix for that web web application we also use remix for other apps what we are going to focus on how we use it for our main web that what users use so first how we started using and uh, building the front end uh daffy or mvp was a red router application being served from or from a rails route uh, and compiled by rails webpacker a work at grid for the MVP and um, proof of concept, but then we changed it to Next.js powering the landings and the web because we wanted to have a uh, server -server rendering and other features. But we had some problems with that setup. We had slow pages on a slow connection to the website. If there was an error on one of our API calls to get data uh, to render on the page, the world page crashed and shows an expected error. Also, forms were way more complex, way too complex to validate and prone to errors. We have many errors there. And we have some unnecessary duplication of code. Also, sharing code in get server-side props function is too complex because you need to grab it on high order functions. So we decided we needed to use something else and we choose to use Remix. And the reason for that is the first one, the resilience. So the resilience is how well an app can support, can keep working in case of an error. Uh, Remix doesn't make your app work uh, all the time if there is an error, but it helps you a lot to get there or, or near there. Uh, with error boundaries, we can catch any unexpected error and show something to the user like, Hey, something went wrong. We are going to, we know about this now, but you can contact support if you need more help. Uh, with catch boundary, we also can customize how we present to users any known errors, like a not phone. The user goes to a charity and that charity doesn't exist, that's a not phone. Or a user profile that doesn't exist, not phone. They want to do something that needs more money on their account. We can return a missing payment error UI with the catch boundaries. Same with lack of authorization. We also can use pro uh, progress enhancement. So if JS failed to load for any reason, the application is mostly usable. At least they can uh, still access the content. Another reason was for a mutation. Uh, with the previous stack, we had to do a lot of things to do a mutation, like create a form, a state for inputs, serialize that, send it in a fetch to an API, create the API in another in another file, uh, send authorize, authorize, validate data, and send it to a, to our Rails API. With Remix, this becomes way simpler. We just render the form, export an action on the same file the form lives in, and we can do the server-side logic like authorization and validation of the data before sending it to Rails, and it works. It's way simpler, like half of the steps. Action code is also on the same file of the form, not another file. That's a great benefit for uh, being able to know what's happening in a root. Like we go to a root, we saw there is a form, we go to the action, we know what's that form doing. We can also add validation with salt. Multi-step forms can work with the JavaScript way simpler and with the back button, uh, something we had issues before. And with progress enhancement, we can use the use transition hook to enhance the experience of the users uh, and show load, uh, from loading states to optimistic UIs. Conventions and separation of concerns is also another reason we choose Remix. Uh, roots files help a lot with refactoring. We can just remove a root file and remove with that the action, the loader, the component, uh, links, everything we need. Uh, nested roots also help avoid duplication. We don't need to move code to another file and import it in many files, like headers shared across roots. We just create a, a parent layout root and put inside everything that needs that header, and that's it. And the component can live in the root. 
loaders and actions also use web standards. And web standards means we spend less time on Remix docs and more time on the Mozilla Developer Network docs. Also means hiring and teaching the stack is simpler. We hired someone who didn't know Remix and she learned Remix for the interview and passed the interview. And other developers focusing on backend were able to learn Remix super fast in like a day or less than a day and started using it. Now, how we migrated to Remix? Like we, okay, we know we wanted to use Remix, but we still had this big next application. What we did? The first thing was we can migrate everything at once. So we decided to run Remix and Next together. To do this, we take advantage that Remix can be plugged in an Express server, and Next can also be plugged in an Express server. In an Express server. So we use Express to run both processes, both apps in a single process. We send everything from a slash underscore next slash whatever to next. So it can handle APIs and sending assets. We use Express static for the public build, the public folder, and the public build folder for Remix. We send a specific request to Remix and the rest of the request to Next initially. This means we had to handle errors on Next at the beginning, but eventually we switch and we started to send re uh, all requests to Remix by default and only specific re uh, requests to Next.js. Yes. We did this when we moved all our catch all routes, that is the user profile, slash whatever is a user profile. Uh, so we moved that to Remix and that allows us to do the switch and say, okay, from now on, everything goes to Remix except this part, like API route from Next or some routes that we were still serving with HTML for next years. We also had, a, had to share the authentication state because moving from one app to another for the user should have been the same. The user didn't know if the route was using a Remix or Next, except probably because it, it was faster. Uh, so we created Remix out, we changed it out zero uh, Next.js SDK to Remix out with the out zero strategy. And then we realized that the session storage object from Remix is actually not tied in any way to Remix. We can use it in Next. You can install that part in the Next app and have it working. So there you can see how you can pass the reg.headers.cookie value to session storage.get session and get the session and then commit the session and get a string to send to rest.setheader. And in the same way we can do with Remix. So we sharded these session startups to be able to share the authentication state across apps. Finally, another issue we have was Remix links pointing to next apps while we're trying to do a client-side navigation. And that failed because the root didn't exist on Remix yet. And the same happened in the other way. Next links pointing to Remix, try to do the same, trying to load the, the following route the user was navigating to uh, using Next, but that, that didn't exist anymore. So the solution was for the, the time the, the migration to, uh, was still happening, we added reload document in Remix components and avoided using Next link component. So every link was a full page navigation, same with forms. Every form was causing a full page navigation even, even if the link or the form was pointing to a root we already know was using Remix. So we we set the baseline, basically everything uh, used full page navigation. And after the migration was ready and we know there was not any more Next.js code running in production, we removed all reload documents and the app become a single page application again. Now how we use a Remix at Daffy. First, Remix is a backend for frontend for us. The user interacts only with Remix. There is no way the user see a request to a Rails API. We just send it to Remix and from there to, to Rails. And we use this to aggregate data from multiple endpoints of our API. Uh, server sites on the loaders, we can just fetch multiple endpoints. We get that data and filter it also on the server side. And we can transform the data. For example, we convert date objects to localized messages or numbers to localize the string amounts. And because of this, because most of these things we use it to do on the UI are now in the loaders, 
or React components are simpler because they just focus on the UI. They focus on get the data from use loader data and show it to the user. And a few specific states or efforts for integration, mostly with third party uh, services. Also, we have this idea of a root file has to be has to contain everything they need at least long, as much as possible. Uh, we only move components to the app slash components folder if they are truly really shared, like we use it on almost every root or at least more than three. So we, we know before moving a component to the to this folder that the component is actually going to be used in a lot of parts, is not tied to the data. This allows simple refactoring of roots because if everything is in the root, we can just remove the roots and remove all the related code. There is no way in where we remove a root and we have a and we left the component in the component folder because we are not sure if something is else is using it. We also avoid coupling components, uh, shared components with data because all of our shared components just receive data from props and not from user data, and they define exactly what they need. And a lot simpler components because you know, they are not. Uh, if they are complex components, they are usually at a uh, tied to what the root is specifically doing and to sleep in the root itself. We also have this idea of a query function. So uh, we this is how a loader looks like in Remix, the initial code where we authenticate the user, create API clients, instances, and things like that are expected to know to not fail. So if they fail, we want the error boundary to render. We then try to catch everything that is expected that may fail. Uh, if there is an error, we capture the exception and send it to Sentry. And we also return or through a response uh, to let the user know something went wrong. We through when the world route is bad, and we return when we can still render part of it. And the query functions are these get something functions with async functions we have inside the loader at the end of the function, the loader code, where we fetch data from the API. We also uh, filter it or parse or transform it there. So the world code is in a single function. And inside this function, we can try catch the, the request. So this means if get donation fails, in this case, the root, we want the root to fail because, you know, if you are seeing a, don a specific donation, nothing makes sense without that data. But if you get charities fail, we can return null and capture the exception to Sentry. So we know something failed, but for the user, what's going to happen is the list of charities disappears from the UI. So important queries can cause the main try catch to fail inside the loader, but the others fail silently. We do something similar with mutation. So a mutation is again a function we put at the bottom of the action where we create the SOD schema. We validate the form data with the SOD schema and send it to the API. And if it's a success, we can return a JSON with a status success or a credit rate or whatever we need. And if there is a error, we check if it's a SOD error. We return a JSON with a status error and the list of error messages. If it's not a soft error, it means something else failed, we capture the exception and show a generic message, usually telling the user to contact support and that we already know of the error. We also handle errors on the UI this way. So we had the cache boundary in case the wall loader fail, the wall root fail. But we move a part of the UI from the root to different components and inside those components that live in the same file of the root, we call use loader data get the data we need and render it. And if the data is null, we just return null to hide that part of the interface. We also define the custom conventions using the handle export. Most of these using com uh, custom conventions are no part of Remix utils. Uh, things like hydrate scripts and dynamic, dynamic links and structured data are part, are part of Remix utils. And we have this global type daffy.handle that we can attach to our handle export um define what that root can set there. So our roots define if they need or not JavaScript, if they need external scripts, can load it that way. We also extend this convention for different layouts. So the boarding handle have 
different conventions that uh, attach it to the global ones. Same with layout on the app handle. And you can see, for example, in the app handle, we have this, we have this aside component that receives the loader data as props. And this allows the app layout route to render the sidebar with the side, uh, but render it in a larger layout with the root specific, uh, children roots inside it in another place. So we can use this as a way to define uh, slots or selling it in some way uh, for different parts of the layout. We also have a type safe API client. So we don't use something like Prisma because we fetch an API. So in order to have type, type safety, when we fetch from our own API, we define a schemas with saw the export, the infer the type from there. And when we fetch the API, we just parse the data as it comes to from SOD with SOD and let it fail if there is an error. So if there is an error there, we know something uh, changed on the API that wasn't expected to change. And we can review we review the error and check what happened. And if not, uh, if, and if something uh, worked correctly, the return value from the API methods is going to be correctly typed with the schema donation type. We also use a lot of resource routes for different things. We, for example, generate PDF because we have to uh, give users report about the donation uh, for tax purposes. So we use a React PDF library to render a React inside a resource route. We and generate a PDF. We localize the PDF using Y18X uh, library. And then we, after we download the PDF, we send a response using the PDF helper from Rex, from Remix Utils. And that way we can generate dynamic PDF. At, uh, with React and the resource root. We also use resource root for open graph images. Uh, in the same way, we just get params from the search, from the URL search params. We use React to render an SVG as a string. If the user expects an, an SVG response, we just return it. If not, we can transform the SVG to something else like a PNG, JPG, WebP, et cetera, and send the file with the correct a content type header. And this way we can just uh, optimize images for open graph as we need it. Now, how Remix at Daffy has contributed to the Remix community because a lot of things uh, were extracted from there. Uh, Remix utils exist thanks to Remix at Daffy. We use a uh, client only use hydrated, use global pending state and more things. Uh, come from internal functions and components. We use it in uh, Adafi, and then we extract it to Remix Utils. Remix Alt uh, was born because the need to implement out authentication at Adafi. I published the first draft with my initial attempt. And then from the proof of concept we have uh, from Remix, we created Remix Out version one with the Outsira strategy that was later extracted uh, to another package and the library grow with the community. Uh, Remix uh, Y18 Next also exists thanks to Daffy using Remix because we need to localize the app. The app is actually in English only, but we support localization already, uh, which is Y18 next translated front end. So again, my initial implementation was published as an article. And then we extracted the library with the actual code. We use it as a Remix Y18 next from Daffy Proof concept. Uh, that was how the, the library was created and the community started to contribute. And that's it. Thanks for joining me.